Today is December 2nd, 2024. In the month of December in 2022, the Reserve Bank of India initiated a pilot program for its retail CDBC, known as the Digital Rupee. That marked a significant step towards digitizing the country's currency system, for better or worse. My name is Nicodemus, and welcome back to the Disruptive Technologies Podcast. Ripple's chief technical officer is one David Schwartz, and he's become a leading voice against Operation Choke Point 2.0. That's a government initiative that was intended to debank the cryptocurrency sector. Schwartz did not hold back. He criticized the government's reliance on indirect regulation. He also laid out four main points on how debanking chips away at the core principles of the rule of law. Operation Choke Point 2.0 has affected over 30 tech firms. This includes big names like Frax Finance and Coinbase. Schwartz argues that when companies get debanked, they are forced to find new service providers or to go underground. This effectively allows them to dodge government oversight and sanctions. He points out that these actions undermine due process, freedom of speech, and protections against unlawful search and seizure. In his statement, Sorch pointed out that the government prefers indirect regulation. I call it strangulation, not regulation. This is done to avoid charging entities directly with crimes, which allows the government to sidestep the responsibilities that come with due process. Other industry leaders, such as Mark Andreessen and Nick Carter, have also spoken out. They point to the intentional takedown of institutions like Silvergate Bank as proof of regulatory hostility towards crypto businesses. But it is not all doom and gloom. There is a silver lining within the industry. Ripple Labs is on the brink of getting approval for its RLUSD stablecoin from the New York Department of Financial Services. This hints at possible regulatory acceptance. Ripple's move to develop RLUSD is designed at improving cross-border payments and liquidity. This positions the company to compete in a stablecoin market that's expected to reach a $2 trillion market cap by 2028. Ripple's dedication to transparency through regular audits is boosting its credibility. Its focus on compliance under the New York Trust Company Charter is also enhancing its reputation. So looking at these developments, it's clear that there is a complex stance that's happening between regulatory bodies and the ever-evolving crypto industry. The government's strategy of indirect regulation is meant to control the sector. However, it might actually stifle innovation and push companies underground. Schwartz and other industry leaders have pointed this out. The pushback from prominent figures illustrates the growing tension between regulatory goals and the real-world operations of crypto firms. However, Ripple's proactive approach with RLUSD and its pursuit of regulatory approval show a possible way to balance industry growth with legal compliance. The situation emphasizes the urgent need for a balanced regulatory framework. Such a framework should protect consumers without putting a damper on technological advancement. In the end, the ongoing tug of war between government regulations and the crypto industry's drive for innovation marks a crucial moment for both sides. Ripple's efforts, along with their collective resistance from tech leaders, sheds light on the broader struggle. The struggle is to uphold the rule of law while nurturing a dynamic financial ecosystem. As Ripple awaits regulatory approval for RLUSD, the industry watches for potential policy changes under the new administration. The outcome of this clash will play an important role in shaping the future of cryptocurrency and its place in the global economy. And that's going to do it for us this time around. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. It really helps us reach other listeners just like you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Disruptive Technologies Podcast. We'll see you next time.